So like you already said, we're, we're not here to give like a legal or business no. take on it. I think we're mostly interested in, uh, you know, the people who participate in it. I, I thought the documentary focused a lot on the founders and we, we should talk a little bit about them because they are interesting characters. Mm. But I think I'm more interested in the angle of who are the people who get involved in these things? How should we feel about them? And I feel like that wasn't really explored uh, in this documentary in a way I would have liked. There was a little bit of that, like just in one episode, I remember them talking about how one of the women felt like she was in a really vulnerable situation with mm -hmm. her finances or, you know, the number of kids she had and felt like this was the opportunity pitched to her to change her life. And it was, it's pretty clear to me that MLMs often capitalize on the vulnerabilities of especially, but not always women, but mm -hmm. that seems to be a hot target because stay-at-home moms or women who have a, 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 a period where they're not in a, an active career because mm -hmm. they're like, they're parenting or whatever, uh, are looking for opportunities or ways to bring in money to the household. They want to feel like they contribute and I totally get that. Yeah. And the easiest way the, per the perceived easiest way to do this is when you're on Facebook scrolling and someone says, want to make money at home for your family. Mm -hmm. And then some of the taglines they use is like family first, uh, work part time for full time pay. And they use all these catchphrase phrases like girl boss, women empowerment, run your own yeah. business, be that boss for your family, uh, retire your husband. And, you know, all these phrases that that are trying to capitalize on feminism, but in my opinion are kind of like a fake feminism because the underlying uh, root there is really not to empower you as a woman in your own business because it's not your own business. Well, I don't think that if we're talking about LuLaRoe, but I guess we can talk more generally, mm -hmm. these companies aren't about empowering these women. No, they're about, about empowering the founders. It's about empowering, yeah, it's about empowering the profitability sure, of, of, the, the of the parent company. Of and the, they're using yeah. that culture to yeah. to push that. And this was maybe the grossest thing they engaged in as a business, among many things, is uh, what they would do is, so they'd get these women involved and they'd really convince them to do a few things, or uh, I think uh, kind of pressure them to do a few things. One of those things was, you know, show off how amazing and successful you are being spend all your money that you're making buying either more product or like mm -hmm. show off your amazing lifestyle so other women will think like oh my god i can make so much money doing this that's just social so it's media like setting them up as a trap you know like buy that louis vuitton bag buy that new truck and then show all your other mom friends on facebook how successful you are but they also like very deliberately wanted to make it a family business. Mm. So like the sort of, it's like, get your husband involved in the business. He doesn't need to work. Retire your husband was Which the was word so they used, right? strange to me. It's, it's, <laughs> it's genius in a despicable way yeah. because what it was doing is for the people who did that and they put all their eggs in that basket, they were dependent on LuLaRoe, on, Lula on the MLM plan and they had to continue taking all their risks income. like buying more profit or, or buying more inventory to sell more or recruiting more people mm -hmm. and their families like household and uh like both incomes are at stake because the husband is not participating in the business the other part i wanted to mention though is that i got the Im impression just like reading through the lines of a lot of their discourse that they post on social media was that the retire your husband part of it wasn't it was in part, yes, to like make the whole family reliant on the business, mm. but it was also because the husband, he's a man, so he must be good at business. He can help you with the business part yeah. and you can just have the fun parties. Yes. Yeah, so the, the version of feminism mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that they were basically, uh, uh, you know, ad advancing, like explicitly they'd have workshops and stuff talking about this sort How of thing. Make your husband happy. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of it was like, you know, just make your husband happy and he'll take care of you. It's like that sort of, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know who calls that feminism, but if it's that sort of version of feminism, and if you call it that. My favorite quote from the documentary <laughs> was the co-founder. What's her name? Deanne? Deanne. She goes, yeah. uh, uh, women can be strong, but there's a time where you ought to let the man be your hero. Yeah. Like, is that not true? Excuse me? <laughs> Am I your hero when I get you tea? It's just like, why is this even a sentence that exists? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't think about uh, relationships in that way. 
uh, like we're equal partners. And if you choose to go into a partnership of a business with your significant other, that's mm-hmm. fine. But like, what are with these assigning of roles based on gender? Let the man be your hero sometimes, ladies. Like, what does that mean? I mean, I know what it means. I, mean, I don't it, like it. <laughs> it's okay if you're each other's hero. Exactly. Hero. See, that's a better take. Anyways. More balanced approach. There was this underlying, like, not really feminism in their, under the guise of yeah. feminism um, in the LuLaRoe yeah. And it's course. manipulative, right? Yeah, for sure. And it's these vulnerable women wanting to be told they're, they're girl bosses or whatever term we're and using that. And that is now. the crux of the problem. And that is why so many thousands, hundreds of thousands, I think, women ended up participating um, and wanting to be onboarded. That's why there was queues. They called it like the, the LuLaRoe queue where you'd spend six weeks waiting to get the call if you would be accepted to be a consultant and pay the $10,000 or whatever uh, onboarding package. Mm-hmm. So you were like getting hyped up on social media that you were in the queue. I can't wait to spend $10,000 to be a girl boss. <laughs> and you're, you know, you're, you get excited because you're joining the clubs or the, the Facebook groups. And then they'd have these events um, where there'd be a raffle. So everyone in the queue could sit at the raffle. They'd fly from around the country, pay for their own pl- plane tickets, yeah. and just at, just hope that they get that ticket to get onboarded <laughs> that day instead of waiting six months to pay $10,000. Yeah. And they'd have these, sorry, at these conventions too. I, we shouldn't underplay them. So they were making... Uh, they were making hundreds of millions of dollars through this business. Who was making? I mean, the founders. LuLaRoe. The, com- LuLaRoe. the company was making... Uh, the like we're the talking- revenues were huge, exactly. yes. So there was huge money we're talking about. And they would throw these lavish parties. Mm-hmm. They'd invite like Kelly Clarkson or... Katy uh, Perry. Katy Perry to perform Mario to Lopez. Remember that? <laughs> I don't remember that. Easy uh, later. But... Uh, yeah, like some of the most shocking visuals in the documentary are like these middle-aged women just having the time of their life at like this Katy Perry concert. And meanwhile, like they're involved in like <laughs> in a literal scam where they're probably going to lose all because their money. Because that's it's what so... works. And that's what's like the most pathetic, sad thing here is that putting on that kind of show is what works. It's what made those women feel like this is the best job of my life. Look at all the perks I get. Who wouldn't want to live my life? Now I'm going to go sell it to others. 